Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, I want to show you how you can turn the datetable mcode function into a query returning a table. So on the screen, you'll see the datetable function query and the invoked function query itself. Now looking at the applied steps pane on the right, you'll notice that there is only one step, the source step for that query. And if, for example, you want to develop the M code for this date table, you would have to continuously switch between the function and the table query to see the results of your changes. But more importantly, when a change results in an error, the table query will return an error. And you'll have to search manually in that function code to fix that error. So let's step to the next page here. And here you see a date query returning a table instead of a function. So when we look to the applied steps pane on the right, we'll see all the steps that are used to build this query. And when developing your date table M code, you'll immediately see the results of your changes in this table query. But more importantly, when a change results in an error, you can easily identify the step that caused the error and resolve the issue. So I've rated this intermediate level, right? Because I think that if you have a bit of experience with mcode, this will be quite easy to follow along. So with that said, let's go over the Power Query. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the forum to get that date table mcode. So on the forum, in the mcode showcase, you'll find a topic called extended date table power query m function. We're going to go to that topic, scroll all the way up to the top and copy that m code. So just copy this, create a new blank query Open the advanced editor and just paste it in. Done. So I'm going to call this dates. So this query returns a function. And if we want this code to return a table instead, we need to make some changes to the M code. And to do that, we'll go back to the advanced editor. And if we examine this M code, we can easily distinguish at least two environments by just counting the number of let statements. So you have a let statement here and a let statement there. Now each let statement has its own in clause and we can find that if we scroll down to the bottom. So we can easily delete that if we want to uh, turn this into a table. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to comment that out by adding two slashes in front. And I'm also going to do that for the first let statement. So the outer let statement is now inactive. Perfect. And below the inner let statement, I'm going to create a section to declare my parameters because we still need those parameters to be passed to this code, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to declare your uh, variables here. And I'm going to copy the first variable name, that's the start date. Paste that in. And I know that in my uh, data set, right, I know my historic data doesn't go further back than 2017. To pass a value to the start date variable, I can use the intrinsic date. So I'm going to do that. Date, and that is going to be the 1st of 2017. So 2017, 1st for January, and a first for the first of the month, January. Don't forget a comma at the end of the line. And we can copy our next variable name. So that is the end date. P. 
paste that in. Now for the end date, I know I'll be doing some forecasting. So I want this end date to always be the end of next year. Now I already have a variable inside my M code for the current date. And that variable name is called the current date. So I'm going to reference that. So I'm going to copy that variable name here. Again, use the intrinsic date. And we're going to extract that year. So date dot year. This is going to be our year value. And I'm going to add one. And I always want that to be December 31st. Don't forget a comma at the end. And on to a next variable. So the next one is an optional uh, parameter here called fiscal year start month. So I'm just going to copy that name and I'm going to paste that in. Now, the moment I pasted that in, this variable name got a red underline, right? And that's because the names match. Now, that was no issue when these variables existed in their own environments. But a variable name has to be unique within an environment. So we have to change that variable name here. So I'm just going to add num at the end. So that's going to be our fiscal year start month, but I'm not going to assign a value. So I'm going to say null. Now, because I changed this name, I also have to change the places where this parameter was referenced. So that is going to be here, paste that in, and here, paste that in. Add a comma at the end. So the next one is our optional holiday list. So I'm just going to copy that name as well, paste that in, and I'm not going to declare that either. And I'm also not going to declare the weekday start number. So just paste that in, null. to add another comment here. So this is going to be the start of the date table code. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to press done. So we can now see that our query returns the type table. And here we have that table and inside the applied steps pane, we can see all the steps that make up our query and we can just step through them, right? So if you want to make changes or amend this day table, you can now just use the ribbon to modify or add additional steps to this M code. And immediately you will see the results in this query. Now let's say we've made some changes to our date table M code and we wanted to turn this back into a function again. Well, we can easily do that if we go back to the advanced editor. So open the advanced editor again and just remove those slashes before those outer let and in statements. And this time we'll comment out our variable block. So a slash and an asterisk and here an asterisk and a slash to comment out this section. Now we've made a change to this line of code, right? So I'm going to copy that and instead I'm going to add a new line. Slash out the first bit and this is going to be the month without that num. So adjust that here and here as well. Perfect. And everything is back in order. So press done. And our query is now 
again, a function, right, that we can uh, reuse over and over again. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best.